Well, hello everybody. Welcome back. This is Jess Janess, and we're going to do our fourth video now on basic geoprocessing and automation. The last three videos we've discussed general geoprocessing, just learning what the tools are and learned about environments and different ways that you can run the tools and the different hierarchies that they work under. Then we talked a little bit about Model Builder, which is just a really cool way to string a bunch of tools together and run that entire model as a single tool. And now we're going to take a quick look at Python. Python is the current language of choice in ArcGIS, and it's, Esri's actually had several languages they promoted over the years. Beginning way back in the Arc Info days with Arc Macro Language, people would talk about their AMLs. Then they went to Avenue and ArcView, then C++, Visual Basic, JavaScript. For a little while, there was SML for simple macro language. That was for the version of Arc Info that ran on a PC instead of a Unix mainframe. Currently, you can program really deep functions in ArcGIS using these .NET languages like Visual Basic .NET and C Sharp. More recently, they've started developing a special language for symbolizing and summarizing data called Arcade. You use that a lot on web mapping applications. And for the past several years, they put a lot of resources into building up their functions in Python. And Python is a good language. It lets you automate a lot of things. And depending on how far you want to go with it, you can do a lot of really complex and powerful things with it. Now, just to be clear, we're not going to actually learn how to write Python in this class. You don't learn Python in an hour. It's kind of like trying to learn French or German in an hour. It's just not going to happen. You have to spend time, probably at least months, studying Python, learning the different ways it can be used, learning the theory and patterns of coding and the basic ways you structure code. Now, if you feel like you can take that time, I really recommend it. Once you can do things in code, ArcGIS really takes flight. You can do things you never imagined when you just knew about the standard tools. There's a few Esri Virtual Campus courses that kind of give you a good introduction to it, and there's lots of books on it. I recommend the Zan Bergen books on Python scripting for ArcGIS specifically, and there's lots of books out there just teaching Python in general. Now, Zambergen's books are good because they target ArcGIS specifically, but, but you know there is a lot more out there, and we have classes here at NAU on it that could help you out. And take a look at those Esri Virtual Campus courses. Just go to this link here and do a search for Python. You'll see a lot of choices. And as an NAU student, you have access to everything on there except for the instructor-led courses. For example, the bottom left one on this image here, Creating Python Scripts for ArcGIS, you notice they charge $2,400 for it. And no surprise, I'm sure you don't have access to that, but you have access to everything else. And if you go through Zandbergen's books, you'll really get a lot more than you get in the instructor-led class anyway. Anyway, Python is a very popular general programming language, and it's used all over the place and has been widely used in GIS. Now, one nice thing about Python in general is that there are lots of programming environments you can choose from. These are called Integrated Development Environments, or IDEs, and if you go to Google and search for Python IDE, you'll see there's lots of choices. A lot of people just use the IDE named IDLE because that's automatically installed with Python when you install ArcGIS on your your computer, so it's already available without having to install anything else. But there are plenty of other IDEs available. And just to be clear, Python isn't just its own program where there's just something called Python that you run, like Microsoft Word or ArcGIS Pro. There actually is something like this back there where you run a Python terminal window, but most people do the programming in some other source like Idle. Some people use Visual Studio. PyCharm, there's lots of other choices. And ArcGIS Pro has a pretty good Python window itself, plus a new alternative called Jupyter Notebooks. And by the way, in case you didn't catch the reference, the name Python didn't come from the snake. It's based on Monty Python, which hopefully isn't too far before your time. This IDE named Idle is named after Eric Idle. Yeah, Python people love this kind of stuff. There's lots of little Monty Python puns and subtleties that pop up all over the place. The python.org site is full of references to Monty Python skits, so it'll help if you're a Monty Python fan. <laughs> really, who isn't? Python's great because it's also used in lots of other software besides GIS, such as AutoCAD, MATLAB, Mathematica. 
If you're into Linux, then most Linux installations come with Python automatically installed. If you learn Python, you can use it in many of the more technical engineering and scientific software packages available. It's also used in other GIS software other than ArcGIS, so if you learn it, you learn the concepts of GIS, then Python will still work for you really well. For example, QGIS is one of the most popular free GIS software packages out there, so if you learn Python, you'll be good to go there. Google Earth Engine lets you program in Python, and in general, it's really popular in the STEM fields, you know, engineering, science, math, and technology. If you learn Python, you can take it lots of places. Now, within ArcGIS, Python is often used as a simple scripting language, and that people often just use it to run existing ArcGIS tools. And all the tools in the ArcGIS toolbox are accessible through Python, so Python script is often an easy way just to run through a series of tools. In this sense, it's a lot like Model Builder, but more powerful. Python does give you the ability to write your own tools, though, although this ability is limited some by Esri's Python interface to the internal GIS functions. This kind of sets it apart from languages where you're interacting directly with the internal components of the software, like you would if you're programming with the internal .NET libraries and a high-end programming environment like Visual Studio. The .NET options give you the ability to write code using much more basic internal functions inside ArcGIS Pro, and it also runs faster than Python. And you can create much more sophisticated tools in .NET than you can in Python. But they're much harder to modify later, and it's harder to share the code. .NET code has to be compiled before it's run. Python doesn't need to be compiled, but it does need Python to be installed on the computer. And Python really is great for running the existing tools in ArcGIS, since Esri provides the Python commands to run all those tools in the toolbox. For example, if you look here, you'll see the buffer tool window, which is what you see when you click the buffer tool. This method of setting tool parameters should be pretty familiar to you by now. And when you run the buffer tool in Python, you just set all those exact same parameters in the line of code. You just have to learn how to phrase them correctly, where to put things in quotes and where to put commas. But it's basically setting the same exact parameters. Now, ArcGIS Pro offers two environments for running Python code right within the Pro software itself. The Python window is a good environment for copying in scripts or typing Python code directly. This Jupyter Notebook is a more sophisticated environment, lets you save in multiple Python functions, lets you put in documentation and illustrations, then you can save the entire package in a single object. You can also run Python code in the field calculator tool. You can even set up multiple functions and have each function call others all inside that little window. Now, we're not going to get into language structure and code conventions and rules in this brief class period, but it would be worth your while to learn Python. And I'll, I'll tell you, if, uh, if you want to be known as the GIS wizard in the room, then learn a language, and Python's a good one for that. Now, even though we're not learning how to write Python, fortunately, you can actually use Python without knowing how to write it. And uh, Esri does provide some cool tools to help with this. In fact, it's often easier to modify Python code or any computer language than it is to write it from scratch. Now, the cool thing here is that whenever you run a tool, you can get a snippet of Python code that would have run the tool with the exact same parameters that you set in the little window. You can even get this snippet of code from the tool before you've run it. Just click on the little down arrow next to the Run tool, and there's an option there to copy the code. Sometimes you still want to run the tool, just to be sure it's doing what you want it to, but you can get the code either before or after running the tool. It's even a common strategy, and one I've done many times myself, just to run the tool a single time just to get that snippet of code. I don't really care what the tool itself did when I ran it, but I just needed that clean code. Now, once you get that Python snippet, then you can then copy that snippet, possibly hundreds of times, just modify it each copy with a slightly different parameter value. Then just copy the entire set of possibly hundreds of commands back into the Python window, hit go, and then just go to lunch or something while it works. Now, there's even a short demo of how to do this at the end of the video in Lab Exercise 8. You can also get samples of Python code in the help windows for the individual tools. Now, a word of warning, don't modify Python code in a fancy word processor like Microsoft Word. These word processors often modify the quotation symbols as you type them. They 
change it into an open quote and a closed quote using different characters than the original quote. These characters are not Python code, unfortunately. So if I typed a line of code here, and notice that the quote is a slanted quote. Type, type the word, and then I hit quote again, and now it's another slanted quote in a different character than the first one. Well, these slanted quotes are not true quotes that, uh, that Python would recognize. So if you pasted this into the Python window, your code would crash. There's actually an interesting thing here that Word does you might be interested, not everybody knows it. Turns out that when you type the quote symbol, Word actually does type the correct symbol, but then it immediately does an autocorrect to change it to these slanted things. So when you type the quote, Word does two things. Then if you remember that you can type control Z to undo the last thing that Word did, well, the last thing that Word did was that autocorrect on the quote. So if you hit control Z, it will just undo the autocorrect and will leave you with the original quote. So for example, I type a quote, Word did two things. It typed up the quote and then it did an autocorrect. So I'm going to hit Control Z. It will undo the last step and it shifts it back to the normal quote. Type my text, hit quote. Word did two things. It typed my quote and then it did an autocorrect. So I hit Control Z to undo the last step and I'm back to the correct quote symbols. So that's how you can make it work in Word, but it's kind of a awkward series of steps to do. You're really a lot better off if you're typing code, do it in a simpler program like Notepad or Notepad++. Word just is prone to problems. Now, if you're interested, I have an example of a combination of Python and Model Builder I did recently. A student contacted me a while back to discuss methods for calculating the slope at regular intervals along polylines based on an underlying DEM. And this was especially tricky because the DEM and polylines would be in latitude and longitude units. So I made him this model that would intersect his polylines with the DEM surface to create polyline Z features. That means polylines that have Z values in the vertices and vertices roughly every 30 meters. Then the model would convert the polyline Z features to points. It add attribute fields for latitude, longitude, elevation, vertical and horizontal distance from previous points and slope from the previous point and then it would calculate these values using Python code with the code embedded in the Calculate Field tools. So if you're interested, it might be an educational example if you want to look it over. And it's in this optional sample model and data folder on BBLearn. It's in the folder Basic Geoprocessing and Automating Analyses. And this is an image of the actual model. And notice it uses model parameters so that the entire thing can be run by double clicking on the model itself in the catalog and then ArcGIS Pro will ask you to set a couple of parameters before it runs the model. And it's kind of interesting if you want to see a quick demo of it. You start with a DEM. The DEM has to be in lat long coordinates. We want to put a line over it like maybe it's going to be a trail location. So let's just make us a quick new polyline feature class. It's going to be a polyline. Doesn't have Z's. We don't need any attributes here. Want it to be in the same coordinate system as the data so we can import it from the McKinsey extent. Okay. Now we have it here. We just make it a, a polyline where we'd like to see it. I'm going to make it go a, a, a weird direction, straight over the mountain and down. Hit F2. Okay, I got my trail. Save my edits. Okay, now I have a trail to run in the tool. So I go to my catalog. Let's go find that tool. It's in the sample tools. Convert polyline. Uh, just to show it here, if we hit edit, we see that it has three uh, variables that are set because they have the P they are, are model level parameters. So if I double click on the, the tool, it'll ask me to specify the input surface, the input feature class, that's the trail, and what the new feature class should be. All right, so I'm just gonna double click on it. Okay, the input feature class is the trail. 
the input surface is the DEM and I'm just going to call this uh, demo. Okay, hit run, goes to work. And there are my points. I can take zoom in. If I and they're separated by 30 meters, I can get information on any point with the explore tool. We see for that point I clicked on, I had the lat and long, I have the elevation, I have how the horizontal distance from the previous point, the vertical distance went up two feet or two meters, the bearing, the, the slope change, and the absolute slope. And we could even symbolize this if we wanted to by those uh, slope values. So maybe we're going to do graduated colors based on not latitude, but let's find the steepest spots, the percent slope. Let's make more classes, 20. Let's change the symbology so it's a little easier to see this. Okay, let's reset this symbology. Okay, so now we can easily see where the steepest parts of the trail were. And that's what the model does. All right, thanks so much. Okay, and I think that just about wraps up what I'd like to say about basic geoprocessing, about environments, and about model builder. A quick intro to Python. So why don't you go ahead and start in on those labs and just give me a holler when you have any questions. Thanks so much, everybody. And try and have some fun with them. Mm -hmm.